How many hours of sleep per night do you normally get? Like four or five. I try to get eight hours, but I usually get seven. I usually, on average, get about four or five hours of sleep. Probably so like six. I get around six hours of sleep every night. I get around seven hours of sleep every night. I would definitely describe myself as sleep deprived. Ten forty nine. 10.49 and I am leaving to go home from school. I obviously came back here from doing other stuff. I had dance class after I stayed after school for a math project and now I'm getting ready to go home, do some home homework and hopefully go to bed. Yep. teens require really fluctuates from individual to individual. However, on average, most 14-year-olds need about nine hours of sleep, and most 18-year-olds need about eight hours of sleep. I'm Dr. Katherine Uschak, and I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist, which means I'm a medical physician um, who specializes in taking care of the mental health of children and adolescents. If you don't get enough sleep, you go through the day tired and groggy, which means you don't have enough energy to put into your academics, you don't have enough energy to have a good mood and interact well with people around you, you don't have enough energy to do the physical activities that are important in life. Um, so it really affects all areas of life. If you manage your time appropriately, you know, again, that's the struggle I think what a lot of kids have, is they'll stay on the video games for three hours after school. You, you need to build in your priorities as to what's most important, and I would hope that after family, after your academics, and after your whatever, however you want to spend your time extracurricular activity-wise, you know, managing your time and fitting those things appropriately, you shouldn't be going to bed, you know, well beyond 11 o'clock. If you're if you're prioritizing, you know how, how you manage your, your time after school. What I'm doing instead of sleeping is typically related to homework and a personal choice to procrastinate. A lot of times I have to do homework, so that's why I stay up late. I really do think that a lot of the decision making is uh, playing into a part of the lack of sleep. Uh, sports are obviously important for students, and I get that, but. Um, then when they get home, are they playing video games? Are they on their phone until late hours? I think they're just not getting enough sleep because of that. Two thirds of the time I'm on my phone before bed. Um, I try to read a book instead or just uh, take a shower or do something right before bed that's not on my phone, but usually end up being on my phone. Why do I stay up late? Um, I watch YouTube some nights. Um, I watch Gordon Ramsay, you know, fishing videos. Um, homework sometimes, but most of the time I get that done during study hall. And I come back to the biggest thing is consistency and organization, that it's important in life to be organized and that connects to the sleep piece. So if you balance out, you know how many hours you're going to have to spend on your homework and time with your, your family and free time to just be a kid, that's all important. So having that organization, that consistency and getting to bed around the same time at school nights makes a huge difference in kids' lives. Most of my friends typically get to school and they're tired, I would say. But that also just might be because of how early it starts. You know, the studies do support that teens naturally have a um, biological clock that keeps them up later and makes them want to sleep in. Um, and I think if we look across our society, um, that has always been the case. Teenagers want to stay up later and they want to sleep in. And I think it's more than just cultural. I think it has to do with their biological clocks. Um, however, we are forced into a, a routine that doesn't allow for that. And so teens are constantly fighting that, um, where you have to get up earlier. And if you don't get to sleep at the 
regular time, then you're going to be exhausted. I think a very reasonable solution would be to push school start times later. Um, and I think another solution could be always decreasing homework school-wide. I know um, teachers tend to give homework that interferes with other teachers' work, other classes' work, and it all just piles up. And I know that you know staying up late to do schoolwork, regardless of whether it be on a computer or on paper, is never you know super healthy. I think that it would be beneficial for students to start high school a little bit later. I know it would push things later in the day, but maybe even just push the start time an hour later. Um, we come to school way too early when we should be switching our ske sleeping schedule with like elementary school kids because they go to school later than we do, but they get up earlier than we do. It's an easy solution to say, well, why don't we flip it? Uh, elementary school kids are up early. They go to bed earlier, they still get their nine and a half, ten hours of sleep. Um, but biologically, kindergarten to fifth grade, having a younger student get up early in the morning, they wouldn't have any problem with it. The problem I have is, as, a, as a parent and as a member of the community, I don't know necessarily I want a five-year-old standing at a bus stop, you know, at 6.30 in the morning, uh, and especially in the wintertime when it's dark, um, that you know there are those safety concerns already for even having middle school and high school students that understand safe practices and being aware of their surroundings. Um, so there's there's a safety concern there. Another option, let's just push the whole system 45 minutes. You know, so rather than the high school start at 7:50, let's have them start at 8:30. Well, our buses at the elementary school don't leave property until after 3:30. So now, at the elementary level, your buses wouldn't be leaving property until after almost 4.15, 4.30. And so, um, you know, uh, just the activity schedules, you know, that students and their families have, you know, is the gain of 45 minutes enough of an of a interest, enough of a su support of really the entire community to help alleviate the concerns of our high school, middle school students getting that extra 45 minutes of sleep time. It would impact, there would be a variety of different variables, things such as transportation, things such as the lunches, the cafeterias, um, student sports schedules, the clubs and after school activities, and along with thinking of our upperclassmen work schedules as well. If you change the school schedule, then you have to change the life schedule of all the bus drivers and all of the teachers and all of the parents. Um, and when you change all of those people's schedules, it has a ripple effect throughout the community. Now, there'll be support from the parents who see a difference in their own children. When you see um, kids who are having behavioral problems suddenly doing better, making better choices, when you see that kids who are struggling in school can now pay attention better and now are putting in enough work to get their schoolwork done, I think it would be good for the society in the long run. But the short term, it's going to, it will be difficult. Um, and so you really need to get people on board with it if we're going to make any changes. Um, I, I think it's feasible. I think you have to do, um, you have to look at the big picture. You have to look at the bell times between your elementary and your, um, your secondary schools. You've got to look at all the other schools, um, the impact of that as far as uh, us being able to do, uh, to do runs. And you have to have buy-in um, from the community as, as a whole as to why we would do that. And yes, though, you know, we, we could do it, and I know that there are other districts that, that do that. Has this been presented before to you, this change? Um, it has not. I know that I've, I've heard discussion of it before, but nobody's ever um, broached it where we've explored it at any great length. I just did some work and now I'm gonna shower and then probably hopefully go to bed. I 
think there are a number of different things that we need to do in order to um, decrease sleep deprivation. Having a school schedule that is more aligned with students' um, natural biologic, biological rhythms um, would certainly be, um, be one start. You know, kids who come to school prepared to learn, you know, they have a good night of sleep, you know, who eat breakfast, you know, they're well fed, they're, they're physically in good shape, you know, you're, you're much more prepared for the academic rigor of what you're going to face during the day, you know. Um, so that, that's, I don't think anybody's going to debate that.